Hello and welcome to Read Read. Today I'm talking about an exceptionally unique novel, uh, The Boxman by Corbor Abe. Um, I found out about this novel because I was scrolling through the uh, uh, list of episodes of the Books of Some Substance podcast and this one stood out to me. I uh, noticed it in the store and I picked it up and yeah, needless to say this is an... Uh, really weird, trippy, um, meta to the extreme novel. It's basically, uh, this spooky tale of this man who is a box man. And to describe what a box man is, pretty much they are people who decide to just leave society by, uh, chucking a box on their head and they walk around and they've got boxes on their head. Uh, and they don't really do anything, um, except have boxes on their head. Uh, and it's really, um, at first, when I was reading it, I thought it was quite uh, um, an interesting, prescient uh, um, tale about, you know, the, I think they're called hikikomori, the people who sort of, like, retreat from society and just play, like, video games and stream all day, uh, and, like, watch streams and kind of, like, don't go out and interact, they don't work or anything. Um, but this book is really uh, kind of... Um, I think it's worth reading and it's more, it's worth reading for more than just the obvious, um, uh, kind of allusion to that. Uh, there's some super interesting language in here. It's kind of hard to talk about the plot because, um, it's written in a series of chapters that are from, uh, like, you know, maybe it's all one person talking about, uh, uh, himself in four different uh, uh, perspectives, like person A, person B, person C, person D, all being the one person. Um, there are times when it jumps to the perspective of this nurse and this doctor, or a fake box man. Um, but by the end of the book, it's sort of uh, strongly implying that they were all just uh, illusions that the box man was creating, that he was drawing on the inside uh, of his of his box. Um, but I want to talk about some. Uh, sentences or, or like quotes that I highlighted because um, I think that Corbo Abe does uh, or did a really good job uh, in kind of honing in on a particular type of looking or seeing or watching the world, observing the world um, that comes from somebody uh, like a box man. So some of the, uh, just to give some context for this quote, um, somebody has come up to the box man and has uh, asked to buy the box for uh, 50,000 yen, or I think like $500. Um, and he writes, My buyer was shining like a piece of broken beer bottle in the evening sun. One knows it is of no value, uh, but there is nonetheless a strange fascination with the light refracted by the glass. One is unexpectedly made to feel as if one were seeing another time dimension. And then he goes on to really focus on legs, and legs become like a really uh, big thing because... As he says, for the box man, you're seeing a lot of uh, people's legs. Uh, and there's a funny quote uh, that pops up sort of near the end in the world, uh, uh, near the end of the book. Um, there was a great, uh, really only like one or two pages later, he has this great, um, uh, he talks about beggars and vagrants and about how uh, like homeless people um, respond really uh, aggressively and negatively to the box men. Um, but he talks about, uh, he writes um, regarding the normal people's relationship to boxmen and beggars. He writes, surprisingly enough, even beggars are a part of the environs that belong to the townsfolk. And when you become a boxman, perhaps you're below a beggar. And that made me think again about the, um, you know, the kind of hikikomoris where they're not really like, you know, you can't even, you don't even know they're alive. You don't even know they exist unless you're uh, kind of intimately related to them and, or, or they're dependent on you, um, as opposed to homeless people who kind of, uh, you know, express their, their need uh, for your arms um, by just being open and in the public and visible to you. Um, there's a running string of, okay, so, one of the things, uh, before I forget about it, it just popped up. Um, there's a running theme or, uh, uh, occurrence in the book where there are these photographs because the main character is a, is a photographer. Uh, the first page sort of starts with a small, really incomprehensible one. Um, and then I'm just skipping through to find another one. Uh, there's some photos and some, just some like lines of sometimes poetry, sometimes just, um, you know, whatever, like random scribbles and drawings. Uh, and I find that 
One of the things that stood out with this book is that I don't think Kobo Abe really tries to pull that many meta tricks in terms of making you feel like a box man. Like there really wasn't a whole lot of, oh, am I the box man? With the exception of a um, passage on uh, news that I'll get to. But there was a really, really funny one in my opinion. So um, this is gonna sound fucked up, uh, but just to give you the context, there is this scene where main box man is approaching uh, this hospital and inside the hospital is this nurse and fake box man or the doctor uh, and the fake box man has a box that looks exactly like regular box man's box um, but uh, sorry just adjusting uh, focus um, but anyway the fake doctor is like going full voyeur and is trying to get is basically trying and succeeding to get the nurse to take off her clothes uh, and get into like these really lewd poses and whatnot um, eventually main box man comes in and fake box man tells main box man that he wants to essentially like uh, get main box man and nurse to sort of play out uh, this this intimate undressing um, and fake box man doesn't want anything he just wants to sit and watch um, and there was a really funny moment where by that point in the book you've probably seen about two or three photos and it's been mentioned that they are photos of really real things. So like a uh, main box man gets shot uh, and the first photo on the first page is the picture of the shooter sort of like running away. Um, so you're kind of made aware that these are real things. Uh, and then there's a, uh, the, the nurse kind of says, you can set up your camera and take a photo if you want. Uh, and of course, we're like the reader is like wait a minute are we gonna get a nude photo uh and so you know i'll totally admit skipped forward a couple of pages just to, just to see if that actually happened and then i walked back uh and then it didn't show up um and it came back i kept reading and the guy was like oh no the background doesn't work and i was like okay maybe it was just me but i think that was a really genius way of making us feel like boxmen um just kind of like that perverse trying to find uh, uh that thing i was like you know because yeah totally i'll totally admit that i i skipped forward to try and find it um uh, and i was rewarded in my not being rewarded um so yeah but for the most part it doesn't really like he doesn't really try to pull any tricks to make you feel like a box man you're just sort of uh getting um uh, you're just getting a really great insight into this person's personality. Um, I've got a whole section uh, highlighted because I just like to go back and reread it. Uh, it's all about this shell weed and it's a, a grass with thorny leaves and uh, twists of firecrackers that covers the whole rocky slope where the guy is sitting right now. Um, apparently if you smell the fragrance, you dream of being a fish. And this whole chapter honestly is, is worth buying the book and reading alone it's just this this crazy um uh the lightness intoxicates the dream fish like alcohol but unless the real but unless the fish is real every case of intoxication sobers up and ultimately palls in the sluggish flow of time boredom soon becomes unbearable it should not be too hard to imagine the feeling of irritation the completely bored dream fish experiences the lack of resistance as if its five senses were numbed soon the free lightness of substance gradually begins to pall uh pall pal pall i think it's pall um, uh, one's whole body is wrapped round and ra round and round as if forced into a restrictive garment in the shape of a fish. The soles of the feet send out feelers seeking uh, the sense of resistance they are used to. Uh, they are used to when walking on land. The joints begin to recall fondly the heaviness of the various tissues and musculature that govern them. There is an unreasonable desire to walk, uh, and once and suddenly one is amazed to realize that one lacks the legs necessary to do, do so. And there's a kind of aphorism uh, that comes later on. Uh, no curiosity can ultimately be satisfied unless one can check by touching with one's hands. And these are, yeah, there's a, a like the book really kind of devolves. It gets a bit more uh, intense. It gets super meta, like super, super meta. Um, I've just skipped forward to the scene, the segment on um, uh, the box man. Uh, talking about how he was addicted to news and how he would like be constantly sleeping with listening to like multiple news outlets um, 
uh, and he says, you know, there's a quote, the globe, the globe is capable of changing shape the minute you take your eyes off it, even for a second. Um, he took seven different newspapers, set up his room uh, with two television sets and three radios. Um, but he talks about... Uh, of course, I was very much aware that no matter how much I went rooting around for news... I wouldn't necessarily come closer to the truth. I realized that, but I couldn't stop. Perhaps I needed the news form, which is summarized in cliches, not truth or experience, um, which has its kind of own interesting parallels. Uh, because again, that was another, um, instead of thinking about him as a uh, kind of the hikikomoris, I was like, oh, is this just people who are watching television and, uh, you know, constantly, um, addicted to thingamabobs. Um, I don't know why I highlighted this. This was just sort of funny. Um, but there is... He's talking about... Uh, he's talking about how he absolutely... He needs to get a pair of pants because the box man is naked at this point. And he needs to get a pair of pants. He can't just get a t-shirt. Um, because... Uh, if I were just in trousers, somehow I could go out into the world. It would make no difference whether I was naked from the waist up and my feet bare just as long as I had trousers on. Otherwise, if you go walking around the streets without trousers, no matter how new your shoes and how elegant your coat, it's enough to raise a big hue and cry. And the thing I highlighted was, enlightened society is a kind of trouser society. <laughs> I don't know why, but that was just funny to me. Um, uh, I did highlight this, but maybe for spoiler reasons, I actually don't want to say it, just because it's a very intense section of, um, uh, uh, yeah, actually, I'm gonna just skip it. There are some really crazy sections about, um, for some reason, the main character starts getting called Chopin, and he's like, why am, why, why would my dad just call me Chopin? Um, and then, uh, another little aphorism, passion is the urge to burn oneself out, um, perhaps we were only... Perhaps we were only too much in a hurry to burn ourselves out. We were afraid of our love stopping before burning out, but we were not sure we wanted to go on the way people usually do. Uh, and then skipping a little bit, skipping a little bit. Um, no matter how long our love goes on burning, when it is burnt out, it is over in an instant. And then the book just like fully degenerates and you're like, what the hell? Uh, and nevertheless, it was an exceptional experience. Um, I, uh, since this, I bought the, uh, I've also bought The Woman in the Dunes, uh, which I think is Kawabe's most popular work. But yeah, this is another book that, uh, falls into kind of Solaris, um, uh, camp of having just such a unique vibe that I've, I've never read anything like it. I know that there's things like, um, Mark Danielewski's, uh, Danielewski's, oh, sorry, I don't know exactly how his name's pronounced. I know his House of Leaves, but I don't know if that book is sort of, um, up my alley. I don't know if it's too hyped at this point or if I'm just like overhyping it or if I'm like, uh, uh, kind of response under hyping it, you know, let me know, let me know if it's worth reading. Um, I really, I thoroughly enjoyed the box man. Um, and I hope you do too. Uh, thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next video.